good morning everyone today we are privileged and honored to host a living legend of kathak under india ireland friendship lecture series ms shobhna narayan today she will share her thoughts on philosophical perspective on indian classical dances with us a name in the realm of kathak that does not require any introduction it is very difficult to do justice to the achievements of a personality of such magnitude however i will give it a try ms shobhna narayan is a recognized kathak dancer trained under under legendary guru shri birju maharaj ji she is a multi faceted personality a performer cho choreographer guru researcher organizer author and also a retired career bureaucrat with indian audit and account services she graduated with a masters degree in physics in 1972 and she also has two mphil degrees in defense and strategic studies and in social sciences she has been conferred more than 70 awards during her journey of kathak performances on indian soil as well as abroad padma shri sangeet natak academy award delhi government parishad samman bihar government rashtriya samman winner of miss un title in 1974 and the list is very long as a choreographer performer she has performed widely in several prestigious national and international festivals and has spearheaded and produced international collaborative works with leading dancers of western classical ballet flamenco tap dance buddhist chants with buddhist monks some of her choreographies are dance enactments to philosophical themes with the eminent philosopher late professor ramachandra gandhi that was based on the lives of contemporary thinkers and sages like vivekananda and ramakrishna paramahansa as guru she has trained several kathak artists rejuvenating the narrative tradition of soliloquy natya katha in solo format shakuntala by maitri sharan gup and yashoda soliloquy by sita kant mohapatra she has authored 19 books and numerous articles including for intact unesco and various established organizations she has also made a film on the philosophical aspect of khajuraho title dance of the temples as an actress her portrayal of alia in the telefilm akbar's bridge and as the leading lady in a much acclaimed hindi feature film avartan won her accolades nationally and internationally she has been conceptualizer creative director and choreographer of several international events miss shona narayan has mesmerized audience with her pristine and sparkling performances steeped in classicism and tradition yet breathe the fresh air of artistic innovations and social consciousness from her first stage appearance in 1954 she in the last two in the last close to seven decades has mesmerized audience around the world now i would request his excellency shri aklesh mishra ambassador of india to please give introductory remarks to today's lecture नमस्कार माय वेरी वॉम ग्रीटिंग्स टू एवरीवन कनेक्टेड विद दिस प्रोग्राम माय स्पेशल प्रणाम टू डॉक्टर शोभा नारायण जी आई हैव ग्रेट प्रिविलेज टू वेलकम यू शोभा जी फॉर यू फॉर मेनी डिकेट्स आई हैव ट्रेमेंडस रिगार्ड रिस्पेक्ट एंड एडमिरेशन फॉर योर साधना एंड एज दायोग्राफी रेड आउट बाई हिमा जी गेव अ क्लिम्स यू आर अ true multifaceted genius uh it through many aspects of indian culture and philosophy and indian creativity you have given the world a new perspective on india uh india has uh, so much of wealth so much of wisdom tangible and intangible heritage uh, so ancient but considering the the incredible wealth that we have uh its profile is understated and one big issue which i as a diplomat feel is that uh, there is a lack of communication capability in uh, uh, 
our art and culture fraternity because they they do outstanding work that don't package it don't project it don't uh, narrate it effectively and that is why uh, for many decades i have admired you uh, in the sense that you are not only accomplished in your skills your acting your dance your music your holistic perspective on indian culture but also you are one of the most gifted communicators narrators of indian culture that i have known so as a former director general of iccr i really admired your your like gift of god to convey and communicate the richness of indian culture i think there are very few people who can do it uh, in practice and also demonstrating and also through a linguistic and communication uh, means uh, and also all forms of uh, media so I, I, as a diplomat i have been fitted from your work your tremendous de dedication to indian culture uh, and uh, the pro the profile that you have created the glory that you have added to india's beauty india's richness and india's respect so uh, we we are grateful to you and we are especially grateful to you for choosing the topic of today's discussion uh, relating to indian philosophy and connection uh, with dance uh, i don't think any any one who is more appropriate uh, than you to talk about it uh, the philosophy as we all know Uh, is a western concept in indian tradition uh, we have darshan and darshan naturally means a vision a deeper vision than our normal eyes can see yet chakshusha na pashyati yen chakshunsh pashyati and also uh, the that vision that world view to look things beneath the surface beneath the apparent reality also has uh, the aspect of uh, knowing things in an integrated holistic manner uh, the concept of brahman itself brahm vidya sarva vidya pratishtha uh, and also uh, seeing things in uh, in a deeply interconnected holistic perspective purna uh, purna mudachyate and also that vision is reflected in uh, our concept of knowledge a uh, knowledge is not seen in indian darshan as something fragmented something divided uh, but knowledge itself is one and depending on the perspective of the viewer he, he or she picks up one tiny part uh, and uh, in the especially in the field of art and culture and dance uh, bharat muni himself very eloquently said na sa vidya na tat shilpa na sa vidya na मूर्तिकलाइट्री aesthetics and psychology so knowledge is integrated and being an accomplished dancer means you have to have that world view that integrated world view not see things in narrowly compartmentalized uh, manner so uh, you really exemplify the talent that you have from science to technology to social media to electronic media uh, and all forms of dance and also not only knowledge theoretical knowledge but excellence in performance and also your contribution in nurturing the next generations uh, so many generations have benefited from your wisdom and you have trained and guided and mentored so many thousands of people we are very grateful to you and uh, we are very excited to have you uh, as part of this lecture series uh, our wish is that uh, great leaders pastors like you uh, share your wisdom on indian culture indian dance indian philosophy and act as a link uh, the, between india and ireland uh, ireland is also extremely rich in culture dance music literature natural beauty painting so as a basher it is very high on my agenda to to foster broader people driven linkage between india and ireland in the field of uh, art and culture especially creative industries so uh, 
uh, because they can make a huge impact on not only the economic well-being but also the social transformation, creating friendship, creating goodwill, creating warmth, harmony, peace. That is why we are very delighted to welcome you. Thank you so much, Omnaji. We are very, very privileged to have you. Thank you very much indeed, Akhileshji, and thank you, Ambassador, for uh, uh, for all the very kind words and what an amazing depth of knowledge and beautiful um, articulation on our Indian culture you have given us. Thank you so much indeed. And thank you for remembering me on this occasion. I'm just a little uh, seeker. And, uh, and I've been seeking all my life the, for the past so many decades. And I still continue to do so. And I probably will be seeking uh, till the, my last uh, till my last dying breath and perhaps you know when you use the word darshan and uh, philosophy uh, philosophy also is trying to understand to seek to, to understand why we come darshan is also a larger and a more holistic and a more in-depth that we are trying to understand who we are, why are we doing what we are doing with what, what is it so all the little elements, and uh, perhaps that uh, is something which uh, is, uh, has been so beautifully articulated by you. And, um, and in our respective ways, we are all trying to grasp and get to the, but as you said, Purna Mada, Purna Mada, Purna Hum to chota se hai, you know, and then, but we think it's a complete, but yet we find it is it is in because you take it out and yet we there is so much more there is more more in the ghada you know in, in that garb greha uh, of uh, knowledge of uh, of enlightenment and we are continuing to do so now coming back to our indian classical dances the first question which really i wanted to ask was that uh, i asked myself why are we dancing what we are dancing what is it why are we, what, when we talk about the Nata Shastra, you mentioned the Nata Shastra. I think I'll just take you back to the Nata Shastra that in the very opening part of it, it is telling us why are we doing what we are doing. And uh, so in a way to use the modern terminology, the vision and the mission <laughs> has been spelled out right away in chapter one. And it's talking about that we what are we wanting to do we are trying to see something to get people you know all of us including the self not only others but in our own holistic way get others also to come to a path where we are doing good we are uh, benefiting mankind uh, by developing ourselves as well as by developing uh, you know helping others and so it is used talking about an audio visual medium. And so that audio visual medium becomes a performing arts medium. <laughs> and it's so beautifully enunciated. And now when we come to movement all over the world, dance we know is the primary because the first, when you're born, you move. Yeah. And the moment movement starts, you're doing, you're drawing out a movement. Where, and when it is in rhythm and in music, then it becomes dance. When it is a little discordant, not in rhythm and not in, in rhythmic sync, then of course, then it is, um, it is not dance per se, but it is a different way you will, we will, uh, we will uh, describe it. So now I, you know, when I think of our Indian classical dances, uh, that we we have uh, eight of them today, you know, uh, from different parts of the country. What is it? Each one is so beautiful. Each one has its own identifying feature. And what is it that makes each one has have its own identifying feature? How do I do? I see something like life itself, reflection of life itself. In life, we are in the samabhang. And then uh, suddenly, you know, we go into a, a bhangs and three bhangs, but we come back to the sama bhang. And now this part of it, how is it? Which dance form? So you see that it is the uh, Kathak doing it, 
then we also when you take another okay i like this particular aspect of life and so i make that as my staying power uh, staying base or my identifying feature we get another dance form you know in this context there was a very interesting observation made by i hope mr bhairappa is hearing it he's this famous kannad writer uh from um, uh, karnataka the kannad writer the award winning uh, writer uh once i'm talking about the year probably the year 99 or 2000 or so around, along that time or in the late 90s or so uh that when we had met we we were discussing and he made a very interesting statement observation i would say he said you know uh when i see the uh, himalayan ranges they are absolutely the peaks are rising up to the as though you're wanting to attain moksha you know so everything is rising up and he says if i look at the dance form of that particular region it is katha and so it is also in that that it is wanting to rise up as though it is wanting to attain moksha and he says when i see the deccan and the others the hill ranges up more tableaued up uh, tableaued out you know sort of uh, plateaued out and uh, so he says and i see that reflection in the basic stances of the dance form i thought it was such a brilliant observation of his that how he saw and connected the and he found a meaning to the positioning to a basic positioning pattern in the geographical term and uh, so um, uh, now this was because it also uh, attached upon the verticality the of, of space time and you know and everything that it is of uh, whether you're looking at how you're using the space how you're looking at the time cycle how you because even its form suddenly starts putting its own uh, uh, boundaries on the time cycle on the tempo on the uh, on the rhythmic patterns so it so they so how one thing leads to another and then create the entire world of it now uh, the so similarly when i see that and i see how uh, then we have that everyone wants to do the awakening our whole inner awakening now uh, so we have we also see that inner awakening of kundalini jagran each and every dance form of ours is addressing that but in a very different way uh, the kundalini jagran say of kathak is very different in the way the, it would be treated in bharatnatyam in the way it would be treated in odissi and other places so here when you have the figures of s's and eights there is an infinite infinity of attached to it and then there is the serpent like movement serpentine movement so which is like the serpentine coil of the kundalini jagran but as i said each one has a very vi visible form but also there is the invisible part of it and the latent part of it and how the two of them meet together and connect and uh, this uh, also gives rise and you can correlate it to the dance form that the, the those dance forms which are more in the tribhangi in the and the move around in the s using the serpentine s and in the eight like uh, everywhere you will find the eight being done particularly in manipuri and others that there's an infiniteness about it there is also infiniteness in what the others are doing but as i said the the narrative of how we do deal with it is becomes a little um, uh, it has its own flavor there is an obvious flavor and there is the subtle flavor now uh, i and as you mentioned about the brahma the brahma sutra hamare hindustani you know our indian classical dance forms we maintain that brahma sutra and in that brahma sutra everything go flows out and flows in you know so but we are maintaining that it is also gravity bound unlike say uh, some of the western forms which are which seemingly seems to be trying to break free of gravity 
but uh, but in uh, in all our things we are talking about this energy this grounded energy of and where everything the mental energy is there the uh, physical energy and the different kinds of energies are we are be uh, utilizing now i'm a kathak performer so i'll take more, a lot of examples from the field of kathak let me first take another uh, example that uh, when i see that the moment we as kathak dancers we start we start in the samabhang position and in the samabhang position uh, if i look at it i am creating one short triangle uh, because i'm like this so i'm creating one short triangle but one elongated inverted triangle and the and if i put the medium the brahma sutra in the middle it looks as though it's going up and so so it, the whole uh, uh, the uh, emphasis is is on attaining moksha everything it is that verticality is towards attaining attainment of moksha so throughout the uh, the underlying latent uh, principle is of attainment of moksha now attainment of moksha i as the performer i as the narrator and when i'm saying i as the narrator now i come back to the natya shastra so natya shastra in chapter 1 says that you have to give it to others you know the spread it out and get into them so that means we are talking in terms of i am talking about upadesh so i come to kanta samhit upadesh so in the kanta samhit upadesh you the um, in other upadesh either you are addressing the mind or you are like a, a friendship thing but in kanta samhit upadesh you are actually directing it to the heart so uh, the the uh, Uh, the kathak are uh, belong to the kanta samhit upadesh kyunki upadesh bhi ho raha hai the uh, narration is there you are giving your telling the about the values you are uh, trying to attain moksha self and in the process you are also gathering energy of the gathered congregation to uh, and taking them along uh, with you towards that path of moksha so it is uh, 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 so i find that that whole aspect of attainment of moksha another aspect that why do we keep the hands like this we, so this is um i hear maybe you know um, or if they can uh, i i'm doing the i of course i prepared a slide a ppt but uh, uh, it is there if they can find the the necessary slide number it is that you know if i am doing this uh, this is the uh, in dhyan mudra this is the dhyan mudra and here again it is the same dhyan mudra which becomes the basic mudra of kathak same mudra and uh, and so we have again we are talking about the uh, the energies for the way we are taking our fingers Uh, how we are uh, narrating it we are putting it then the dhyan mudra is our basic mudra of kathak now according to lakshmi tantra fire here is the energy heat and so it comes out and comes in so if we are drawing energy going out but it comes back so it is this uh, energy so this is the basic stance of kathak and which is becomes uh, it's uh, it there is a philosophy behind it and uh, and uh, and it's uh, and uh, it also speaks so much it makes sense also that we are taking it there's another very typical stance of kathak this now in this again so you you won't find this in any other um, you know, uh, it has its equivalent in any form uh, uh, so in this form now it says ki hum to we are narrators we are just the medium i am the uh, priest of the temple or whatever be the i between the leelas of god the plays of god and the gathered congregation and so from there from this i suddenly you know bring it to this and it becomes this so this becomes my basic position now here again means that i am in vibing something and giving it to the world in turn i am receiving 
and I again try to uh, exit. So there is a constant give and take, give and take. So it is a receiving, giving, receiving, giving of yourself. So uh, throughout the Kathak is emptying herself out or himself out. So it is, we are becoming whole, but we are also emptying ourselves out completely. So it is, uh, um, the, this, uh, this dialogue goes on and this figuratively has been given in the, in the form of a movement. It has been uh, addressed uh, in such a manner. Uh, interestingly, um, you know, when um, you were talking about that all arts being interconnected, I think we all of us are very, or um, uh, many of us, I would say, not all of, but many of us are very familiar of the, the interconnectivity uh, of all genres of knowledge of, with Sage Markande and, you know, uh, Vajra and Markande. That entire thing of Vishnu Dharmutar Puran, that nothing is exclusive. They are, everything is inclusive. And that is also the reason when we are talking about dance, uh, or uh, dance actually is everything. They, and we are talking about Sangeet. Sangeet also incorporates dance. The uh, dance is also incorporates Sangeet and Sahitya and everything. So dramatics. So nothing is, uh, you know, kid, uh, they, it is a much later that you have started segregating it into uh, genres of pure sequences or this sequences or that sequences or only Abhinese. Because each one of them has dance in it. Each one of them has rhythm in it. Each one of them has Natya in it. Each one of them has Abhinay. Nothing can be is possible without Abhinay. And uh, and uh, so it's so that interconnectivity of uh, of culture being i as i al i've always said it and perhaps you've heard me also say that i am a painter i too am a painter i'm a sculptor as a dancer we all are painters and sculptors because my canvas is the uh, environment around this uh, this air around this entire view is my canvas my uh, body is my paintbrush and I'm sculpting out or I'm painting out figures in it. And what am I coloring it with? I'm coloring it with emotion. So when I'm coloring it with emotions, I'm have giving it this meaning. There is a, it's just, if this is it. So if I do this, it is in a nice way. If I do this, it is, it is dry. It doesn't mean anything. Or if I do this, it might mean something else. If I do this, it means something. If I do this, it means something else. And so the kind of tension or elasticity I give it to changes the entire complexion, changes the meaning, changes the environment, changes the texture, changes the narrative. And each one of them uh, uh, has its own place and that is what uh, is important and it is also the reason why when we are talking in terms of it uh, I'm just jumping to um, Keith. Keith has said uh, ki, um, there are two types of Kathak, the Pathak Kathak and the Dharak Kathak. So Pathak is the, the one who just narrates the stories, Katha keh rahe hai, you know. So we also, Katha kahe so Katha keh la hai. But we do it with our anga bhav, with our how bhav. So we are utilizing the entire, so we become, we patra ko dharan karke. So we are, uh, pure ja, dha, patra ko character ko dharan karke hum katha kaise. So we are the dharak katha. Now, in, in this aspect, so um, uh, we, uh, uh, I would like to mention another aspect that when we are talking in terms of, um, you, you know, we were talking about Purnata, Purna Madam Purna Madam. You take out, it's a complete, but you take it out, it's also complete. It's a, it's, it's Shunya is there. Shunya, from Shunya, you take out a Shunya, it is still a Shunya. It is complete, yet you can call it a Shunya. 
which is complete of a different, it is a completeness of a different order. So now if I look at uh, the, uh, say in a Tayari Ang of, uh, which we call the rhythmic pattern, the Nritta Ang, the Shuddha Padhati, the Nritta Padhati, which means just the rhythmic part, whichever. We are doing small rhythmic patterns, rhythmic uh, phrases, dance phrases. No, those dance phrases, we start from somewhere. It is, and then we finish it. We, it traverses its journey. It has its own cycle of life. And once it has completed its journey, its cycle of life, it comes back to the starting point. So it is a mini shunya that we have created within the larger shunya. So we have extracted it. So every point, so the starting point and the ending point is the, of that is the same. And so we are creating lots of shunyas throughout. And this is also in the, when we are talking of Brahmari, the, the, uh, when we say ki, Kathak mein bohat brahmari hote hai. Bohat aare brahmari. But thik, the one aspect is okay. There is a technical skill involved. Fine. But let's go beyond it. Why? Why is it necessary? Why was it considered necessary? Why was it also included and become part of our entire uh, textual discourse? Now, the uh, ancient text narrative and discourse is because they are you know uh, we, they are actually symbolic they philosophize they are a physical philosophization of the cycle of life and death of the kala chakra the jivan chakra we are all we are there is a cyclic uh, journey that all of us are going through birth uh, preservation and liberation. I would not use the word death, but because it is liberation, because that ha has its another cycle. So it is, so this cycle, the Jeevan uh, Chakra, there's a Kala Chakra. We have, we see it in Ritu Chakra. We do every, so everything is cyclic. And that cyclic part of it, how would a artist, how would a painter, how would a sum? It's through this cyclic creations. And as a dancer, as an artist, as using the physical body, you start doing the chakra. So that chakra, the different rotation, whether it is the sun over here and we are the planets moving around it or whichever way. Now this sun and the planet moving around it, that has been beautifully depicted in the Ras Leela. So now that Ras Leela, where we are talking about just the Ras Leela, Krishna, the, the central, and all of us are the planets around, the gopis are the planets around. And we are all moving. So it is cycling. We are all moving around. If I use the Maharas, that is a different, because each one, we are coming back to that um, uh, Vedic uh, thing of, uh, and the Puranic of Purna Mother, that within each one of us, there is the element of Krishna and Radha. So we are a complete unit by itself. So we are a complete sink and we are each one of us moving around each other. So yet we are moving around the whole, but yet we are a complete unit by itself. You remove it, we are still com complete. So this aspect of the, cyc the cyclic formation is, has been, is visible in our, uh, uh, not only in our literature, because uh, performing art depends, has a lot to do with literature. It is, uh, uh, it is reflected in our literature. It is reflected in our performing art. It is reflected in our philosophical thoughts. Because we are now philosophical thoughts and that is what we, uh, the dance gives expression to and the uh, text, uh, text or the literary Shabda gives expression to. Uh, when talking of Krishna, another thing comes to mind is about we always see, look at Krishna with his butter, makhan. 
Now let us think of the word makhan. What is butter is very slippery, very slippery. And what is it is addressing? It's talking of is addressing the ego within us. That even the ego within each one of us is like as slippery as the butter. And so how how beautifully this has been connected. That ego part of it. That it is we are wanting. We want to have the butter, but and so there's an egoistical part of it. But it is so slippery that we we slip into that uh, into that abyss, and yet we have to have control over it. And so to be able to actually get control over it. So Krishna eating butter is that of that you are having control over it. That you are able to not uh, slip into the slipperiness of that ego, of that uh, slippery butter. Uh, so each and every symbol of ours, uh, there is a lot of uh, depth and dimension to it, including even a very small thing like um, uh, the Kalya Daman. We, uh, we are talking and we are talking about Krishna dancing on the hood of Kalya. And in Kathak, there's a famous uh, Kahavat also uh, and a belief that uh, when Krishna danced on the hood of Kalya, then the bowls, the sound of the feet became the sound of Tathe Thetat and that became the, the basic bowls of Kathak. Uh, so that is a belief, a faith. That, uh, that is there amongst uh, several Kathak artists, several genres of Kathak artists. And, uh, but the question is that what does it signify? What does the dancing on the hood of the snake signify? Which means, again, uh, getting hold or, uh, you know, sort of having control over that serpentine ego of ours, the serpent-headed ego of ours. And that is how if we are able to get control over it, we are not killing it, but some swer is necessary, but not aham. That not ahankar. Swer is necessary, but not ahankar. So that, so the difference between that little bindu and that bindu creates all the problems. That bindu also is the uh, is the great uh, elevating part of it also. So uh, that aspect, which again, uh, the or talking of the bindu, it reminds me of this famous thing of uh, ke, um, of uh, 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 what is it? Um, chinta yeshya chita yeshya bindu uh, uh, bindu matra vishishyate. Chita ko agni jala deti hai, lekin chinta jo hai jeevit logo ko jala deti hai. So it is just that bindu from a chinta, chita, from a chinta, if you put the bindu and it let it eat the fire within you, then you become the chita. So you are becoming the chita. So how much that bindu, that shunya, which is a bindu has the put the potency of that bindu is a lot which can be seen in the positive way and that's also something that you have to keep control over it. Uh, uh, so these are the aspects. Now let me also come to another aspect of how and all classical dance forms, but it is there in different ways. It is um, uh, mulled over. Uh, it is uh, if I look at uh, one uh, another aspect of um, tatkar, the footwork. The tatkar, when you get into that state of ecstasy, of complete submergence of oneness, then you actually hear music. You hear the music within. It is not that external music that you can identify but it is hearing the inner music. And that inner music comes about when there's sense of harmony and balance. And that is why our Indian classical dances have always been equated to yoga. You're not, because it is not only physical exercises. Yoga is not physical exercise. Uh, uh, yoga is a 
is a meeting point of the mental, physical, and the spiritual. That means there's complete harmony. Complete harmony if you're uh, at balance within yourself, you're at, at harm, in harmony within yourself, then you're also in harmony with the surrounding. You're in harmony with your thoughts. You're in harmony with your words. You're therefore in harmony also with your actions. And therefore you see that uh, you also learn to appreciate differences. We again come back to now uh, uh, that ekam uh, sat vipra bahudavadanti. We come to that famous again uh, Rig Vedic saying of ekam sat vipra. There are so many ways of telling the same thing. And we, and therefore, and now um, that one thing, I'm coming to the another world of bhav batana. The bhav batana in Kathak. One word. How many ways can I say it? Just a word doesn't mean it's only this. Just the word red doesn't mean it's only color. It also signifies to it signifies anger. It signifies blood. It could signify the vermilion mark on the forehead of the married woman. It could signify the binti, it could signify, it could also, if, uh, if I take the uh, Hindi word lal, then it also signifies a child. The child where all your emotions and, uh, you know, bhavnas, etc., everything is, you know, desires, everything, you know, uh, is sort of uh, centered. And so we have. So one word, but so many dimensions, so many ways of it. And I would like to uh, talk about, you know, um, uh, just go back into a time zone when we all saw, at least many of us in our uh, group, we all saw and heard, um, actually not only heard, but we saw Shambhu Maharaj Ji doing Kona Gali Gayosha. Ab wo kona Gali Gayosha? Uh, you know, that is in which lane, which path did Shama take? Now, which path? Very literally, we could do this. Which path did Shama take? Now, the word Sham. Sham is Krishna. Sham could also be the dark clouds. Which path did it take? Where did it disappear? Sham could be the kajal of my eyes. Which path did it take? Look at this, this path. Sham could be my dark hair. Which path did it take? Sham could be my braid. Which path did it take? Sham could be my between life and death. Death is sham. Life is the other aspect. So, uh, so there are so many different ways. So we are coming into another metaphorical uh, aspect of the the direct uh, 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 interpretation, the literal interpretation, the metaphorical interpretation, the poetic interpretation, the metaphysical interpretation, the philosophical interpretation. I would also like to, again, there's another uh, very beautiful one, which again I love, is Atariya pe chad gai mein ho gai batna. Now the word itself, so they, this, it opens up that entire canvas of emotion. So many ways. Ekam sat vipra bahuda vadant. Atariya pe chad gai ek hi to sat hai. Atariya pe chad gai mein ho gai badna. Lekin ab kaise? How? What atariya is it? How did I become badna? Badna, does it mean only in the negative sense? Or does it, could I also take it as a, that everybody comes to know of my existence, that I'm there. Is Atariya, does it only mean that it's a kotha or the city or the terrace? It, yes, it means something where you raise yourself, where you're going up, upward. Let me put it this way. So now, if I look at it, the Atariya pe chal gai, very literally, 
the first anybody knowing hindi and urdu or the uh, or the genre of uh, of the a certain era will suddenly think of the the kotha you know and you will say okay, and you will uh, the fragrant flowers and you are going up to the to the particular uh, abode of the of the um, of the uh, particular uh, ladies you know away over there and uh, now um so that is the very obvious literal meaning but if i take it in the symbolic way and the so now as that if i become the that here is the, a little dibya it's closed it's open and i become synonymous with the sindur i have climbed up a tarya pe chadi a tarya pe chad gaye now you know that I'm a married woman because I hear the telltale marks are there. So there's so many ways of doing it. Now even suppose let us take it a candle over here because I see a candle stand over here. So that's why. So now with this candle stand, the candle is there. Now I um, I become the flame. Atariya pe char gai, main ho gai badnam. So I've spread light. And so everybody knows that the candle is burning and this light has spread. So now here it is in a positive way. Uh, extremely that, that you are spreading en enlightenment, you're spreading light, you're spreading, you know, um, and uh, uh, so, so the candle has become badna, you know, because she's spreading light. And uh, now suppose if the I blow out the candle, what happens? Something is still climbing the Atarya, and that is the smoke. The smoke is climbing the Atarya, and so Atarya pe chad gai. Now I become synonymous, because I, everybody knows, looking at the smoke, that I was burning. I had been burning, and that now I'm just a smoke. And let me also, the one of the, all of us have to go through, which we fear, but we still go to, have to go through. A lot, many, I would say 99.9% .9 of mankind fears death. Yet, it is an inevitable truth. It has to be there. And uh, that inevitable truth is that when I, this inevitable truth happens, atariya pe chad gai, mein ho gai badnaab, and you look, that because the soul has migrated to another realm. It has left this body and it has gone away to some other realm. So here it is. So here when we talk about, it is that we are all trustees of whatever has been given, of our mindset, of our thoughts, of process. How as trustees of all that knowledge that is available around us, how much care are we taking it? And we are mulling over it, seeking the answers within and giving it back, you know, and being able to uh, give it back in the, to the world by bettering our own selves. And when we are bettering our own selves as human beings, and uh, we are in sync within, in harmony within, we are also in sync and in harmony with our outside world. And we are able to then uh, be in sync, uh, appreciate diverse ways of arriving at the same place. Diversity, we are able to. So Shwet and Sham, it's the same yet. Because the light, when we are thinking in terms of light, the, the, the velocity, the frequencies are there, but the different frequencies but both are there you know so there is shwet and sham and uh, so we are uh, so everything is interconnected it is how you uh, see it visualize it and what is and what is the message you take home it also reminds me of one uh, very uh, when uh, the in the unmasking of death which uh, our great philosopher uh, the late professor ramchandra gandhi in fact, when I quoted that slippery as a butter, it was he, it was him who had used it for one of uh, uh, the plays that he wrote for me 
on Mohan and Rambha and ego as slippery as the butter. And he also talked about Parvati's hair and the braid and the serpentine and the Kundalini uh, part of it. And But in that unmasking of death of Ramana Maharshi's uh, uh, sort of encounter with death, when he uh, has that encounter with death and he goes to Madurai, to uh, Vinakshi temple at Madurai, and then how is the, the uh, Yama, the dialogue with Yama, that so Yam with death is how that each one of us, again, while doing it, yet we are unable to, uh, that uh, we fear Yam, but at the moment, uh, as uh, but at the same time, we are actually abusing Yama the entire time by creating problems. So, so this encounter, again, there's such these philosophical dimensions of such encounters with death, with life, with different aspects and which we all do uh, some way or the other. The artist is the philosopher. The dancer is the philosopher. It's uh, uh, so sculpting out of the body, doing the kriya through the word kri is actually, so it is meditation in action. There is a meditation which is uh, sitting still, but there is a meditation in action. And we see the two, uh, the two, uh, they, they seem to be diagrammatically opposite yet they are the same because both are yoga. Both are yogic principles. And we see Shiv as the Mahayogi and we see Krishna as the Karma Yogi. So he, here's meditation in action and there is of a renunciation meditation. So, so everything is possible and that dance through these symbolisms uh, the intelligent dancer actually understands and does it. And the, because that is what it was meant to be, what it was supposed to be, and that is how it uh, evolved and it grew. And, uh, and it flowered and it still continues. So till today also, I would say that even the word veil, the ghungat, the ghungat is again, something that we are we are doing the, there's a social part of it the social norm part of it but look at it from the other aspect that each one of us is covered with a veil the veil of ignorance the veil of non-understanding and that is what the Indian classical dance forms all of them try to Remove that veil of ignorance, of that non-understanding, and to be able to present it, the, the actual essence, the sar of that essence, the sar of that, the nichur, the essence of it, so that for all of us to be engulfed in it, to become one, and to traverse the path towards moksha together. Thank you. Himaji, it was a really mesmerizing lecture. Uh, Himaji and I both were totally glued up to the screen and listening to you and absorbing you. Your presentation, uh, we are going to watch many times because <laughs> everything you said was so full of wisdom. And the way the, the, the veil part that you mentioned again, it's like such a profound message you've given us uh, in the way that there is. Uh, and also I think your uh, message about dancers including the like concept of uh, Shunya and Adantra. Uh, again there's something very new and I have not thought about in that perspective. But uh, again, this like uh, your, uh, it reminded me of Upanishad, Upanishad uh, Ano Raniyan Mahato Mahiyan. Yeah, Bilkul. Ayam Nihito Sejanto. Sejanto, that. Bilkul. 
that the same concept, the same reality is finer than the finest, yes. and bigger than the biggest, larger than the largest. Yes. That is what brings a fundamental unity. Yes. What gives our philosophy ability to harmonize diametric opposites. Precisely. So we don't look at the reality as like monochromatic or black and white. We know the infinite dimensions of the reality. Yes, exactly. Also, your, your lecture like demonstrated to us how different art forms they are connected and also how each one pursued the same objective. Same object. We so, were all born in the same environment that is of devotion, of trying to understand, of trying to get darshan. Uh, each one, each one of the art forms, and yet in its own manner, it's traversing the same path in a different way and going to the same end. Yeah. Someone had that kind of vision, then naturally you don't see things in compartments, fragments, divisions, conflicts, you see unity, you see harmony. And, and that is where I think uh, the Indian dance stands out, distinguishes itself from other dance forms, Western dance forms, uh, which are like Indian dance is not just about body, not just about body movements. It's Wait, no. Uh, it is something, and that is also the reason why that um, it is the expression, just one glance of the eye can just speak volume. Absolutely. It just, I mean, it speaks more than uh, than thousand words, just a glance of the eye. In fact, you know, uh, when you're talking about, I also remember in our Indian class, when I was initiated, uh, into dance, which does not happen today, unfortunately. Um, there is a, what we do is a simple ganda, you know, this way. But when we, hame pehle chana khilaya jata tha. we were given gram to it, uh, eat, a little bit of gram when the puja was taking place, the prayers. And then uh, a little bit of gur, jaggery was given. And then the uh, the uh, Molly Dhaga was tied. The reason was that anything, if you want to get darshan of anything, you want to become a Siddh, the, or trying to become a Siddh. Let me use the word, nobody becomes a Siddh because uh, we are still far away from it. You know, everybody is. But you're trying to become a Siddh, maybe in this form or that form or that form or that form it is it is a hard way it you have to actually chew like the way you have to do a little bit of exercise with your uh, jaws you know to chew hard gram so it that is why the chana but once you're on the path your it is the, the fruit is sweet and therefore, it is the good was given to me. And then why was the, the string tied around? The string is tied because let this, uh, this uh, thread of, uh, of pursuit of knowledge be always there. It never ends. And which is again cyclic. So it's not ending. So one, even if one goes, the other one is coming again, you know. So it is cyclic. So that thread should be the unending, infinite thread of seeking knowledge. presentation We are truly honored, truly privileged. And uh, once again, our uh, very sincere thanks to you. And I wish uh, you and your family all the very best. Really Thank sure. you very much indeed. Thank you, Ambassador, for remembering me. Thank you so Thank much you. indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.